So in the previous video, we looked at the spread syntax. In this video, I'm just going to quickly cover a couple of changes that have been made to object literal uh, syntax. So, you know, basically what they've done is they've simplified a few things when creating objects using object literal uh, syntax. And I thought I'd just quickly point those out before I move on, right? So I'm going to jump over to the code. I'm going to try and cover this very quickly. But basically, the first thing that you used to have to do with object literals is that you had to specify the property name and the property value at all times. Now, this has kind of changed a bit. It's now that if you want the name of the property the property to be the same name as the value you pass in, i.e. the parameter name, or sorry, the variable name that you give it, you can just pass in the variable name on its own. Now, I'll give you the example of this. So if I come in and I go var first name equals, I'll say Daryl, var surname equals Duck Manton, and then var age equals, and I'm not going to tell you my real age, 25. <laughs> uh, Basically, when you used to have to create an object literal, they contain th these three things. Just say a person record old, because I call it the old way. You would do something like this. You would go, you know, first name, and then colon, and then you would put first name, right? And then you would go surname, colon, surname. And then finally, age would be age. Right. Now, that's all well and good, but there's a bit of redundancy here in terms of what I'm typing. So I'm passing in the text first name, then I'm giving you a variable with the exact capitalization next to it as the value. Same with surname and same with age. So what ECMAScript has done instead is it said, if the variable name, I mean the name of the variable here is going to match what the property name should be, just don't pass this first bit at all. So now you can do something like this. You can go person record new equals first name, comma, surname, comma, age. And that would spit out the exact same as the, the, the part above here. And just to test that out, if I go console.log of person I'll record old and then person record new you should see when I run it they'll be exactly the same so we'll come over node literal syntax as you can see they're both the same all right they've come out exactly the same way first name surname and age and basically the value of the parameter has been replaced with the value part. So that's the first thing that's been covered. Now, the next thing that's been covered is what is known as computed properties or computed, yeah, basically computed properties. And they look something like this. So if I come back over and just say, for example, I have three variables, size one, which is equal to, let's say 16, var size two, We'll say it's 32 and uh, size 3, which is equal to 64, right? If I wanted to have an object that had property names that took the size into consideration as part of the name, so i.e., you want it to be computed based on this, we could do something like this. We go var. Uh, image statistics will say is equal to the object literal and what you can do to define a property outside of the normal way which is single quotes or just typing it you can put square brackets in all right and this square brackets allows you to create a property name dynamically so now I can do something like this I'm go size one plus and we can say bit image, right? And we can give this a value. So I can say, um, 
let's say size one plus bit image dot png all right and i can do that the same for the other two as well so a little bit of copy paste work so i'll grab size two and size two and size three and size three all right and you might be saying what the hell is going on here what, what's it going to spin out when i console lock this out well it's actually going to spin out 16 bit image is the property name and then it's going to spit out 16 bit image dot png is the value so this is what's known as a computed property now because you're taking into consideration a value you know that's inside of this variable up here as a way of defining the variable name now this is just one way i could think that it would be used to define you know if i want to have you know a 128 size bit image I just put var size 4 is 128 and then it will define it as the 128 bit image, so on and so forth, right? So I'll console.log this out so you can have a look at what it does. So if I go image statistics and I come back over here, I run it again. Now you'll see we've got an object literal that has a property called 16 bit image with a value of 16 bit image.png. 32-bit image with 32-bit image.png and 64-bit image with 64-bit image.png. So just a little bit of funkiness there, nothing major. Now, this is also what's known as an indexed property. So you can actually access, well, you can access any property on the image using index notation. So let me give you an example of that. And this is just this time using a function. So if I come in here and I go var print numbers, like so, and we'll make it equal to a function, and all it does is go console.log, and we'll say 1, 2, 3, right? Something silly like that. It doesn't really matter all that much. If I come to here, I can now redefine that name of that print numbers to start off with. So we'll go... We'll go print it like that, and we'll make it equal to print numbers. You're like, okay, cool. So we can call this two different ways now. We can come down below. We can go image statistics dot print it, all right, and that will work. And we can also go image statistics, and in as a key the name of the actual property, or in this case, the property is equal to a function, and then invoke it. And you can do this with any, any property that's on your object. All right, you can call it using this index-based notation. It's, but basically, the name has to be the name of the property on the, on the object literal. So if I save this, and I run it, there you go print it, so it's spat out a function that's called print numbers, so it doesn't take the print numbers name into consideration down here, but when it shows the image statistics, it'll say print it is actually pointing to a function that's called print numbers. And then you can see it actually invokes it successfully using both syntaxes, both the method syntax, which you normally see, and then in this case, the index-based syntax. Now, I don't really see this index based syntax all that much unless you're doing something like uh, reflection based work where you don't know what's inside of an object but you just want to see what's in there and inspect it. You'll do something like this, right? It's not very common that you'll do this kind of thing. Normally, you know what exists on the object already in terms of methods and you just call it. But just in case you ever do something dynamic, it's there and available for you to use. So that's it, that's all I wanted to show about uh, object literal syntax. In the next video, I was gonna start looking at the let and const variables in ECMAScript 6, but before, but before I get to that, I might have a quick discussion about temp uh, template uh, syntax. There's some new template syntax for strings and things like that. So I'll get to that first, but that will be in the next video. So I'll see you then.